Well, I would like to welcome you to Careers Week. It's really exciting where we get to talk a lot about careers. But before we start, I would like to do an acknowledgement of country. Where I'm coming from today, I would like to pay respect to elders past, present and emerging of the Yuggera people. It is my absolute pleasure to be able to welcome Sharon Donaghy, who is a careers executive. She owns her own company. She's been doing it for over 15 years in the business and she owns her business Sharon Donaghy Careers. Welcome, Sharon. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And Henry Smith. We've got Henry Smith, who's a long jumper. He's represented Australia in the 2019 World Athletics Championships in Doha. He's an absolute legend. So glad he could join us here today. He's representing Six Degrees Executive, where he's a talent engagement specialist, moving more into research. Welcome, Henry. Hello, thank you for having me. Well, it's really exciting. I'm actually really glad that we can talk about careers because being an athlete, well, being an engagement manager, I'm really passionate about seeing athletes do a really good transition out of sport into work. And sometimes I don't know that it's done particularly well and I don't think it's done very smoothly. And I think there's a little bit of confusion around what career practitioners do. And that's where we want to be able to clarify a little bit today. So Sharon, I'm actually going to start with you. And you mentioned that you're a holistic practitioner, which I'm very interested to hear about. But can you tell us a little bit about what a career practitioner does? Because I think a lot of people are under the assumption that you do LinkedIn and you do cover letters and you do resumes, which is actually so far from what you actually do. Yeah, absolutely, Liesl. And um, it it really is. So what I would like to say first and foremost is um, that your athletes with uh, Athletics Australia are entitled to um, work with the Career Practitioner Referral Network, which is what I'm a part of with the AIS. And um, for the athletes, when I work with them, it's a very individualised approach. So there's no cookie cutter approach that you do come in. And like you said, we go through your LinkedIn and your resume and we tick those boxes and you're on your way. Um, What the research really informs us is that um, when athletes know who they are and they have a purpose outside of their sport they're actually going to perform better and be a better athlete so when I sit down with an athlete I look at them as you said holistically and what that means for me as a career practitioner is that I sit down and I understand who you are as an athlete so I've worked with Henry previously so um, what does that mean you with you Henry as an athlete as a long jumper what are your commitments what's your travel time what does that entail and then we look at what does that also incorporate your your life outside of sport do you have a family are you working as well so what what goes on there and then we look at your career and we bring it all together so who are you what are your strengths what are your values what are your interests and this underpins everything so then we can move forward with some real direction and clarity and as a career practitioner I go through career guidance I go through career skill building Um, and I I also do do those um, the LinkedIn and the resume as well so as you can tell it is not just a cookie cutter approach to understanding who you are it's looking at you holistically and how I can best support you move forward as an individual. And I think the great thing is you've been doing this for a very long time. You've seen a lot of different people and not just athletes. You do it with, you work with a lot of different people from many different backgrounds. And I think that's what makes it really special is you have that understanding of what the transition is like across the board. Yeah, absolutely. So so you're right. Yes, I do work with athletes, but I also work with um, young adults. So secondary students, tertiary students, young graduates, all the way up to, to corporates as well. So I have seen the whole sector and um, nothing surprises me. And um, I really genuinely, everybody is uniquely different. So it's really important that we come into each session with open eyes. Love it. And Henry, you've had a really, what you would call probably a successful transition, but you haven't actually transitioned out of sport. You've got a really great dual career. Can you tell us a little bit about what was going on for you, especially during training that made you want to look at uh, a career outside of sport and really focus on that and therefore working with Sharon? Yeah. So it's a bit of an interesting story. I think it was 
back in when was Commonwealth Games in Gold Coast? Oh, 2018. Know, three, four, yeah, <laughs> years ago. Um, I just missed out on the qualifier by four centimetres. I just finished my bachelor degree in psychology. And I guess the next step for me was to go into honours. And I remember the emails coming through for either being, you know, accepted or declined. And I remember him thinking, I hope I don't get in. Oh, and wow. That was a kind of a short tail pretty much for me thinking, you know, it's probably not the right thing for me moving forward. Um, and then I kind of thought, oh, I'll just take a gap here, you know, the typical student thing to do and then kind of figure it out. And if I want to go back to honours, I could go back in the next year. And then I remember just sitting down with my physio and I remember him just grilling me hard saying, you know, you're going to do nothing for the whole year. Um, you know, you're not going to be earning money for your athletics. Um, and honours for psychology probably wasn't what I wanted to do moving forward. So I kind of sat down, had to think about what I wanted to do. Um, and then I just started to reach out to people on LinkedIn in terms of the areas I want or the industries I wanted to go into. And I started meeting up with a couple of people. And then I started to see the benefit of potentially working full-time or part-time along with my athletics, you know, in a, in track and field, a lot of us don't have the sponsors or, you know, the full-time commitment to have a, I don't know, a 60 plus thousand dollar sponsor behind us. And I could either sit down and work another three, four years in retail on, on minimum wage, or I could get out there and get a job and start my career <clears throat> as well as kind of have the backing of the financial support or, or a potential company to sponsor me as well. And um, yeah, I took that opportunity and I was lucky enough to find Six Degrees who was who been super helpful uh, with everything moving forward. Yeah, that's amazing. And in terms of working with Sharon, how did you go about that? What, how did the connection happen? You know, where did it go to from there and how did the relationship work? Yeah, so it was during the height of COVID and I remember just sitting <laughs> down and like it was just a horrible time for everyone, especially in Melbourne when we had that, that stage four lockdown. And in terms of the, the recruitment industry was pretty much flat. So there weren't, there weren't many roles coming through. Um, everyone was kind of struggling. And for me, it was, I guess, another reset to kind of understand what I wanted to do moving forward. I had a, a, a small understanding of where I wanted to go, um, but I needed someone to help me put the puzzle, to, puzzle, to, puzzle together, sorry. Um, so I made a few phone calls through some people at the Victorian Institute of Sport. And then I got in touch with Mel, who then told me about, you know, this program and it was free. So I thought, you know, I've got a lot of time in my hand. Why not? Yeah. And um, yeah, and that's how I kind of got in touch. And yeah, it's been awesome. It's pretty amazing. And I think a lot of athletes don't realise, Sharon, just how this service is so beneficial to them and that it's all completely free for them. What a great opportunity to be able to look at not only your sport, but looking at a dual career and what you want to do after sport, because it, it is a realistic conversation we need to have because sport does end and you retire very early and you're very young. So what would your top tips for athletes be if they wanted to think about having a dual career? Where do they go? What do they do? And what are your tips when they're, I guess, thinking or considering a career? Yeah, absolutely. And and you're really right. I think there's this misconception that um, the career counselling um, isn't for me right now. But um, my advice to every elite athlete is to start now. And it's really, it's, it's, it'll come from the AWE managers and myself as a career practitioner, the importance of doing that. But what I would say to the athletes and challenge the athletes is that, um, yes, do it, but you need to own this process. So what we do is give you the resources to make all of these informed decisions. But if your head's not in the game, it's a waste of everybody's time. So it's, it's such a beneficial process for you to go through. So starting now around understanding who you are aside from your athletic identity and what we find working with athletes is they have this fabulous ident athletic identity and they understand who they are within their sport but when we take them outside of that environment that's where they think oh my gosh who am I and what is my purpose here so this is where that holistic counseling comes into play and and we really complete that 360 degree circle there so um 
as an elite athlete, you are in a dynamic environment. You are exposed to a diversity of networks. Start networking and exploring opportunities now. And as Henry said, he started reaching out on his LinkedIn page. It is such a valuable asset to do. So maybe you, you are at a function and, and you meet some people connect with them reach out to them and and you never know when they're going to come back and you can complete that loop again and get some work experience maybe but have those conversations also a big one for me is as an elite athlete your transferable skills that you have in your bucket are huge and I do a lot of work with athletes in understanding taking those skill sets from the elite environment to outside of it and it's it's building what we call the self-efficacy so the self-belief in in the athletes to be able to transfer it because they're so confident in their elite environment to outside of it so things like the, the leadership, the communication, the teamwork, the discipline to show up to training, the motivation, the time management. Uh, what else is there? There's problem solving, there's decision making, there's the strategic thinking. So it's sitting down and understanding with the athletes, what ones of those do they shine at? And how can we um, make the correlation between the elite environment and, and beyond and support them with that transition? So I guess the key takeaways, Lisa, for me is to start now. It, it, you've got up to, with the CPRN, up to four sessions with, with a careers counsellor. And if you need more, they're there for you as well. So please, please use this opportunity. You've got nothing to lose by doing it. Can, um, network, explore your opportunities and also understand your transferable skills and continue to work on those as well. Yeah, I love that. And especially the networking, because the events you get to go to, so many people don't even get the opportunities to go to those events and you can network with some of the most incredible people. And I think the bit about identity as well, you are so ingrained as an athlete as to what your identity is and who you are. And you think you're so limited with the skills that you have, but it's so untrue. You just have so many transferable skills. And Henry, you've done that so well, obviously transitioning mm -hmm. into your career, you've used everything um, and I just wonder how identifying those skills that you had previously, but really highlighting them into what an employer would look like and how that looks like working day to day, how that identifying those transferable skills has benefited you. Yeah, it's been massive. I mean, my whole, I mean, the reason why my employer pretty much hired me was on the basis of my values as an athlete and the skills I kind of presented um, and I think that's a massive thing that if you do go into an interview, those are the things you need to highlight, and especially looking up a company's values and understanding how those align with yours is going to, you know, be waves in terms of success. I guess for me, the main things were obviously as an athlete, performance matters. So, you know, I'm, I'm there to perform and I'm there to bring a high performance attitude into a company as well in terms of whatever I do, being passionate. So being passionate about my sport, what I do, my team, my coach, who I work with. And the same thing kind of applies to the company I work with. So being passionate about the industry, who I work with um, in terms of my team, my manager and those who support me. Curiosity is a massive one as well, right? I think that's one that people kind of don't think about. I think as an athlete, a lot of us as students of the sport, you know, if you think you know what you're doing, well, then you're screwed, right? So <laughs> we're constantly trying to evolve and adapt and understand how we can better improve ourselves. And you take that same mindset um, to an employer or a company, right? You want to understand their mission as a company, their values, what they're there for, how you can provide your skill set or your values to help them improve and move forward as a business. Um, and what was another one? Let me think. Do what's right. That's a good mm -hmm. one. Um, you know, in a sport that, you know, for a lot of, especially track and field, a lot of drugs that are <laughs> you want to do what's right. And it's the same thing. Uh, you do what's right by your employer or all the clients you work with, the customers, all the service, all the products you provide. Um, and those are just a couple of things, you know, that we can touch on. But there's so many other things that you can bring forward to a company. And, you know, there's loyalty as well. And as a company who, you know, for a lot of businesses, taking on an athlete is massive. And you can obviously see the journey as well and be a part of that. And at the end of it, you have a lot of like a loyal employee that comes back um, who's willing to kind of give 100% or 110% to the same kind of effort they've given their 
their sporting career or endeavours. Yeah, I completely agree. I think athletes as employees are just wonderful. They bring a really unique sense of style. And I think probably what you were hitting on there, Henry, is like we work with integrity. That's probably a big thing. And and it's sometimes it's hard to find, especially when you're working in a career, that real integrity piece is so crucial. And um, Sharon, you might agree, but athletes that travel the world, they have worldwide experience. They work with people from different cultures, different nations, have a really worldwide experience, and they can bring that to any company anywhere and can speak with anyone and and do it with respect I think is one of the greatest skills you could possibly have yeah um, and as we know um, being a global citizen is such an asset to to add to to your resume and athletes are driven humans and um, they just add so much value to an organization it's about understanding and for those listening and, and listening to Henry Henry's done the work so he understands values and strengths are and how they align to organizations so that's exactly what we do as career practitioners we work with you to understand what that is and how we can transfer that outside of your elite environment and I think that's a big thing too you can have all the access to all the wonderful services but you really do have to make it work and Henry I think you can be absolutely credited with that because you've obviously worked incredibly hard and and you've got yourself in a good position and that that's all down to you making it work I mean Sharon helped but yeah it's just about doing the work and getting in and getting it done but that's all for today I really want to thank Sharon and Henry for joining me today I really do appreciate it and just really shining a light on what career pr- practitioner referral network can do the success stories, just how helpful it can be. Um, I think it just is going to be, make a huge success in so many athletes and it's great to see. And uh, I would like to thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks for having us.